So as many of you know, I had Gary Black on yesterday, and I'm hoping hoping that you saw that show. And if you didn't, you should definitely go back and take a look. But we didn't have time to get into a list that he sent me. He sent a a, a, a good set of, a good set of uh, positives and negatives about Tesla. And I thought that uh, maybe we can uh, go over that this morning. I feel as though it's instructive. And uh, I'm going to go line by line, piece by piece, and, and, and go through that. And then at the end of this video, I want to go through Gary's most recent list of catalysts and also assess those. You know, I do my own lists of catalysts, but I'm not going to have my list up this morning. I'm just going to look at Gary's. This is Randy Kirk. This is as good a time as any for you to hit like and subscribe and notify because, of course, tomorrow, well, let's talk about the rest of today. First of all, later on today, I'm going to take a look at the bots and because there's a lot of new breaking news on the bots and not just on, on Optimus. It's very important. This is a very different story than the car story where we very rarely talk about the competition here. In this particular case, the competition is not that far behind Tesla in terms of the science, I guess you'd call it, the mechanical ability to make bots that are similar in terms of their capabilities. And also the software seems in some cases to be equal to, and, and now with uh, uh, a the um, uh, folks over at uh, you know Brett Adcock's place that one <laughs> the figure AI um, the software might be slightly superior because the bots now speaking so I think uh, while I believe that the TAM on bots is massive and therefore it's not going to matter if there's a bunch of different competitors um, it does I think it's it is important to take a look at the other bots because there's this convergence of capabilities and everybody's looking at everybody and the bot program, the whole bot idea is being is being moved forward very quickly as these competitors are all, this one's better at this, this one's better at that. So I'm gonna talk about that in detail today and also where I think Optimus is in that situation and what we might be seeing in the near term, especially in terms of actual deployments. There's a lot of noise around maybe bots already out there. We know there's a few that are already out there doing really minor tasks, but maybe that's being stepped up already here in early 2024. Uh, then later in the afternoon, as always, we will have the Tesla news. Uh, that's what we do every Saturday because nobody else does the news on Saturday. That'll be, you know, probably around three or four o'clock uh, California time. And then we get into Sunday morning. There has been an awful lot of, you know, people knocking down Tesla's valuations and whatnot. I am going to take a look at these decisions and why I think there's about maybe, I don't know if I'll get to 10, but I believe I could get to 10 different reasons why these valuations could be way off and Tesla could beat the street by a lot, not necessarily in the first quarter, but going forward throughout the year. There's too many unknowns for these to be, uh, to be very... Uh, useful, I think, as tools, unless you just want to be super conservative. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow afternoon. So hit notify so you can be notified of all that. And of course, join Patreon and buy some of those uh, bottle cap openers. All right. Let's uh, take a look at the positives from Gary Black. Now, remember, these are Gary Black's positives. I'm going to comment on each one. So number one, he says EV adoption is still 15 to 20 percent year over year. Well, what he means by that, of course, I think you could probably understand it without me saying it, but what he's saying is that EV adoption rates are increasing by 20, 15 to 20% year over year. Well, this is based on the nonsense that the general mainstream media and, and the Fudsters and probably the uh, legacy automobiles are feeding the press that people are walking away from EVs and not as excited about EVs. And therefore, the 50% per year curve that we've been seeing is not going to be continuing. Um, I don't think that there's much evidence to support the fact, the actual fact of the 50% per year not continuing. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow morning in more detail, but for now, I'll just say 15 to 20% would be a really, really low number in terms of increased adoption rates. And I don't think that's going to be the number when we get to the end of 2024. But what he is saying here that the positive is, is that there is at least a 15 to 20 percent increase that maybe even the mainstream media and the rest of that list that I just gave you would agree to. And that if there is a 15 to 20 percent increase in the United States, Tesla would grab most of that because there's no real competition left in the United States. So that would mean 
Tesla could grab maybe 15 to 20 percent increase in the U.S., which would be better than what the street is expecting right now. All right. Then we got he says cyber cyber truck is scaling. And so that, that's a pretty easy one. Every evidence would be that Cybertruck is now up to around 300 or more per week. That's totally satisfactory for this point in the ramp, and it might be a lot more, uh, but we should learn, uh, maybe we'll learn more between now and the end of April about what that ramp really looks like, because we have the numbers coming out in the uh, on the 2nd of April, and then we have the uh, earnings report and earnings call, where I'm sure that will be a major part of the discussion. All right. Um, then we have, he says, the 25,000 EV will be coming in 2025, 2026. Um, so, you know, last we heard uh, that the, the uh, uh, Gen 3 vehicle will be avail available to start shipping, start ramping uh, in second half of 2025. A lot of people are pushing this to 2026 and 2027. I don't think there's any, I think there's zero evidence. I, if you would put in the comments below where you, any actual evidence that this is going to be late, I, I haven't heard anything from an executive at Tesla. I haven't heard anything from anybody that claims to have inside information that this would be pushed further into the future than what Elon and the, and the team has already said, which is mid 2025. In fact, you can make an argument the opposite way that that was, uh, uh, you know, that was just, um, you know, that it, that it could happen sooner. That's what I'm trying to say. It could actually happen sooner. Uh, I'm sure they're working their buttons off to get this done as quickly as they possibly can. And we'll see when it actually pops. But I don't think there's any reason to push it into 2026. But as he points out, once we have more clarification, more clear, more obvious information about when it's going to come. And also, once we start seeing pictures or uh, um, examples, um, you know, actual driving around samples when they have a reveal day, all those kinds of things are going to be big catalysts, of course. Um, and then uh, Tesla is starting to advertise, he says, is another positive. And so we know that that's taking place. He attended a, a, a investor relations day a couple of weeks ago at Tesla, where I guess he talked about that more. Um, we know that there's ads going out on YouTube. We know that they're advertising on Twitter. We know, or X, we know that there's other kinds of, of social media ads being done. Lots more trade shows that they're involved in. A um, bunch of stuff being tried. I guess last week we even saw a Cybertruck pulling a trailer behind it that had a big sign that was advertising uh, the, the Tesla brand. So uh, lots of lots of advertising efforts taking place. Then we've got um, his last one here is that Tesla currently is relatively cheap on PE, where Tesla had been in past years at a 200 PE, 120 PE, an 80 PE, a 60 PE. Now we're down to around a 50 PE. Uh, maybe falling below the 50 PE. And he's saying, well, you know, relatively speaking, that's a good number. However, if, as he pointed out on the show uh, yesterday, if in fact Tesla's um, performance expectations for this year are that it will not grow at all or only grow 5 or 10%, then a PE of 50 would actually be an overstatement. Now, if you look forward and you say, okay, but 2024 will be this gap year, and 2025 will be 25% uh, or 30% growth, and then maybe back to 50% growth in 2026, then, of course, the PE's, PE would be multiplied up. We'll talk a lot about that tomorrow morning on the show. All right, negatives. Uh, number one, continued price cutting has destroyed 50% of the Tesla earning power. Well, okay, so first of all, we got to talk about where the price cutting came from. Remember, we were in a boom bust and there was crazy pricing going on because there was no cars available and Tesla didn't want the middlemen. He didn't want uh, people uh, flipping the cars, selling them at this price, and then somebody else turns around and gets 20 grand because they because the shortage out there in the market. People have sharp memories about this kind of stuff. So once the boom bust was over, you couldn't continue to be up at those prices. It wouldn't have mattered if Tesla was first to cut, somebody was going to start cutting because the thing was over. The the craziness was over. The supply chain problems were done. So Tesla cut when they felt that they needed to cut, and they did that all year. Now, they went maybe further than um, they needed to. Maybe they, I don't know, maybe they wanted to move the metal. They didn't want to, you know, end up building up inventories, and they could tell in the pipeline what was going on. 
And maybe they should have started advertising sooner. I could make that argument. Maybe they should have started advertising a lot more, even whether sooner or later, they could have done more and maybe they should be doing more. But um, I don't think that they're going to continue to price cut. He said he couldn't get them at that meeting two weeks ago to make any kind of statement about a floor on margins. And so that worries him because people are saying, well, the margins now are around 17, 18% but there's a possibility that they could go back, go down to 11. And some people are estimating 11% as the margins. We'll talk about that tomorrow morning as well. But anyway, um, he's saying that's destroyed 50% of, of Tesla's earning power. Well, where does he get that? I mean, it was at 30% was the max, which was nuts. It's at 17 now. Yeah, that's close to half. But, uh, and I'm not knocking Gary. Again, I respect Gary. But the, the reality is the 30% was never a real number. 25%, 24, that's a real number. So if we're at around 17% now, that is a rough number, a tough number, still industry leading. Um, and so uh, getting back up to 21, 22%, I think is doable this year. We've got lots of people like Jeff Lutz and others who have confirmed that we're getting 2% per, per quarter uh, cost of reductions, the cost of goods reductions. And by the way, uh, the short-term price decrease in February did end and remained ended during the, during the course of March. And now just this morning, they've announced another $1,000 increase on Model Ys, both in Europe and in the United States. So uh, yeah, that could actually be good for the stock Monday morning. All right, number two, year-over-year -year auto re revenue growth about to go negative. Well, that is probably going to be true for the first quarter, but Maybe not. We don't know yet. Um, but let's just say it's really close to even or slightly negative. First quarter's typically not that great. Um, not total shock that we might go quarter over quarter negative. I'm not sure. I have to, I'd have to go back and take a look. I'm not sure whether this would be a year over a year miss, uh, but I don't think it is. It could be. But anyway, either way, uh, it's a one quarter situation. I don't, and I not again, not 100% sure that it will happen, but we've had the problem in Germany uh, with the uh, 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 terrorist attack. We've had the problem, some kind of a problem with ramping the Model 3. So those issues will not be with us in the second quarter, and typically the second quarter is much stronger. So I think people have to look past that. I, I, I don't know if they will, but I think they do have to look past it. It would be nice to have Tesla at the earnings call actually give us some kind of guidance. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. They haven't said they won't, um, but we'll see what happens. Um, number, number three is Wall Street's first quarter and full year volume and EPS estimates way too high. And uh, the M3 Highland transition one time, uh, you know, that there's be some one-time cost in that transition. Okay. Um, yeah, so they are probably way too high for the first quarter, but don't know if they're way too high for the year. This is what we'll be speaking about all tomorrow morning, so I'm not going to spend that much time talking about it here. Just know that there's, I don't know, I'm going to say 10 reasons. Maybe there's 12, maybe there's nine. Major reasons why the earnings estimates are too low, we're, are already too low right now, and are really going to be too low after all these adjustments. But we'll we'll go through that in the morning. Um, next is the China price war is hurting Tesla's China sales. Well, I don't know. I really don't. Um, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, we'll find out what happened in the next in the next week in China. But China's current sales levels, they're not a lot higher than last year, but they're not a lot lower. And we don't know how much is being exported. So um, and there was a, you know, a big difference in terms of when Chinese New Year took place. So I don't think we'll know really until April 2nd how China is doing this year. And by the way, as much as I'd like to see a 50% increase in sales in China, not going to happen. Let's just get that out of the way. They don't have the capacity. You're not going to see a 50% increase in China sales. And a lot of the other markets that China serves, like Australia, are going to see nice increases that are going to suck up some of that manufacturing. They, they probably have 100, 150,000 cars additional they can make this year, depending on who you talk to. But a lot of that's going to go to places like Australia, maybe even Japan. Uh, South uh, South Korea may or may not take from China. I'm not sure. But uh, they've oh, just opened Laos and Malaysia, uh, Chile. So uh, all these new markets are going to be drawing off of China. 
they're maxed out. So don't look for this huge increase out of China. It's going to have to come out of Europe and it's have to kind of come out of the United States. That's where the big increases are going to have to come from. All right. Number th uh, next, Europe, weak due to loss of subsidies in Germany and France. Well, maybe it's weak, but they're raising the price April 1st on the Model Y. I don't think the Model 3 is weak. Uh, it's a really, really cool car, great car. Um, I have no, no evidence that the Model 3 is weak, but we'll find out more when we get to April uh, 2nd on that one as well. Hard to call right now. Brand being hurt by Elon's political statements. Well, okay, I think that's baked in. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get any worse. But if the brand is being hurt by those things, then then it would only be two places. I've talked about this before. I'll talk about it again tomorrow morning. There's only two places that we are seeing anything that is less, less than what we might have hoped for. Model Y sales in Europe and the United States. That's the whole game. Okay, everything else is fine. China sales, I think you'll find are going to be fine. Model 3 sales, I think you're going to find. Once they start making them in quantity in Fremont, I think you'll find Model 3 sales are going to be fine. Model Y, Model S are going to, I mean, X and S are going to be fine. Yeah, up or down a little bit, but who cares? The ramp on Cybertruck, they got more orders than they know what to do with. So it really comes down. <laughs> Nobody's saying this, just here, just on this channel. It really comes down to how many additional Model Ys can we ship out of Austin and how many model additional Model Ys can we ship out of out of uh, Berlin? That's it. The total year is for the auto side is based on those two things. We'll talk a lot more about that tomorrow. And then finally, capital deployment policy unclear. I agree with this. Where where's the money going? And why isn't it going in as quickly as we would like into Giga Mexico, into I would like to see it even much faster in Reno. What's happening with the mega factory in China? What about the uh, the expansion of Berlin? Because this whole thing with the forests and the and the eco terrorist and everything it has to do with the next piece. Not that has nothing to do with the expansion that's already already been approved. So why isn't that expansion happening faster? Uh, we did hear some good news about that last week in terms of, uh, you know, it looks like maybe they're going to maybe they're going to maybe make semis over there. Uh, and that uh, the, we've always I've always believed that the Gen 3 vehicles would be made there. That didn't seem to be news to me. All right. And then, of course, in terms of the batteries, we've always believed 100 gigawatt hours would be done in Germany. So that also was a news. All right. What about Gary Black's catalyst? Number one catalyst. Um, is $7,500 EV instant rebate is already taken place. So that 7,500 instant rebate, as opposed to taking out of your taxes later, is in place. It's affecting Model Ys and Model 3s in particular, but I think uh, some of the lower end Model Ss and maybe even the X, um, I'm not sure, but I think that's true. So, and the Cybertruck, so all, uh, eventually the Cybertruck. So all these things will be helped by the $7,500 instant rebate um, and maybe that's why the price of the Model Y is going up on uh, April 1st. So, um, yeah, I would agree. That's a catalyst. Number two, Cybertruck halo effect. Absolutely. Uh, Gary's been talking about this for a very long time, as have I. The halo effect is happening for sure. It is creating a massive amount of brand identification, a massive amount of interest, a massive... Uh, Huge numbers of articles, not necessarily in the mainstream media, but in lots of other media, reviews, et cetera, et cetera. It's just starting. It's going to continue, continue, continue. And of course, that is going to cause attention to the rest of the line. Okay, number three, the M3 Highland US launch. So that's also happening now. Uh, for some reason, slow. We've been talking about that a lot already this morning. Number four, new Elon Musk comp plan. So at some point, there's got to be a new compensation plan put in place. We've got the uh, the um, uh, in the <laughs> the uh, I was forgetting it's not in Delaware. We have the Delaware uh, Chancery Court that is, the decision is uh, going to be appealed or is being appealed. So we've got to get the appeal. Uh, we've got to get the board meeting. We've got to get a compensation plan assembled. There's a lot of work to do there. When all that is done, some people think it's 50 points. Um, you know, on on the uh, on the stock, uh, I, I can't imagine. I don't think that once that compensation plan is in place, the stock goes up 50 points. I could be wrong, but there you go. All right. And then he says, uh, Fed will start cutting interest rates. 
Second quarter, that is not going to happen in the second quarter. There, I think there's zero chance it happens in June, maybe July, maybe August. Um, so uh, higher for longer is probably absolute. Well, so much can change. The next CP, PCE, the next CPI, the next PPI, all these things, so many things can change. A really bad print on uh, jobs could cause the Fed to, uh, to panic and start lowering them in April. I mean, in the, in the middle between two meetings. But I don't think so. Right now, my best guess would be third quarter, if at all. And um, so, yeah, but when that happens, it will, if, if and when that happens, it, it would be a uh, catalyst. Uh, then we've got the uh, FSDOEM licensing deal. So somebody pointed, somebody said yesterday on X, they said, if uh, any major OEM in the world who hasn't called Tesla Friday, based on the videos that are coming out on FSD 12.3, um, is uh, stupid. <laughs> I'm basically, I forget the word because you're not allowed to use the S word, are you? I know my children weren't. Anyway, um, <laughs> an idiot. I don't know. Foolish. Uh, not making sense. And then the person went on to say, well, the OEMs haven't made a lot of sense in a lot of different ways over the last couple of years. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, if FSD is, is complete or if... Tesla is able to show OEMs more than they're showing us about how good FSD is right now, or if in fact, what we're seeing is truly the, that other individuals could look at those videos who know way more about this kind of stuff than I do and say, oh my gosh, it is no longer a matter of if, only a matter of how much compute and how much data. Uh, so therefore it's, you know, could be any month. Yeah, the, these OEMs should be calling and setting up licensing deals. Um, I think it's a much bigger deal uh, is going to be, if it's FSD complete, that is going to be the catalyst. Okay, then um, we've got uh, 25, uh, the next gen car coming out. Um, uh, and he's saying, um, oh, this is a catalyst. Yes, of course. Full year 25, sometime in 25. That would be a catalyst. And then number eight, Optimus production begins in sometime in 2025. Yes, that would clearly be a big catalyst. But I think there's a major catalyst way before that. And I think that is if Tesla is able to show clearly that Optimus is working in the factory at human speeds. And it's not just one, and it's not just one job, but there are multiple Teslas actually that you can see that are working in the factory in factory jobs on a regular basis. It would probably take a half an hour video to do this, but it would, I believe, blow the stock up. I, I, that's just me. Oh, yeah. And also giving some pricing. Is it going to be $6,000 a month, $10,000 a month at first? Is it going to be $100,000 a unit, $60,000 a unit? What are they going to charge for these things? Uh, we can work on figuring out what the cost might be, but what is going to be the deal? And are they talking to people? I would have to think that thousands and thousands of inquiries have already come into Tesla. I mean, thousands and thousands of inquiries. We know the inquiries are coming into Figure AI. We know the inquiries are coming into these other companies because um, they've talked about them and they're doing the deals. So I have to believe that they've received, I don't know, pi piles and piles of inquiries. Okay, and then uh, $250 price, his, and then his price target for the next six to 12 months is $250. That would be a nice up from current 150. That would, anybody that doesn't like to buy something for 150 and sell it for 250, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to, they're not going to be uh, in my management group, my my financial management group. Okay, that's it. That's the, uh, the catalysts. Uh, and then again, if you didn't watch yesterday's, I mean, this should give you an idea how good that conversation was. So go back yesterday, check that out. It was really, really, really good. And the card will be right here. And then watch later today when we talk about Optimus and the other bots and what's happening with them. Watch much later today when we give you the Tesla news over the last 24 hours as, as of three or four o'clock California time this afternoon. And then tomorrow morning, this reanalysis of how we get to 
much better numbers by the end of 2024 than what the street is saying. And these will not be Randy's optimistic numbers. These will be, I'll give you multiple, multiple, multiple ways, not just one way, not just because they, you know, Elon finally gets out in front of that sales group and tells them you better get out there and sell some vehicles, not just because the advertising starts working. No, I'm going to show you multiple ways that they get to more revenue, more profit, and that the street's not paying attention to any of these possibilities that are all natural, normal possibilities, okay? That's what we'll do tomorrow morning. All right, I'm done. That's it. Talk to you later. It's been great talking to you.